the Walgo AT2 is Walgo's second attempt at an all-terrain board. And this time, I really think they knocked it out of the park. It was released in August of 2020, and it has a maximum speed of 25 miles an hour. The max range is 22 miles. The deck is 38 inches, but the total length, including the tires and the motors, are 44 inches. You can buy the board for $1,100 for either pneumatic or cloud wheels. But if you want to get both, it's going to cost you $1,220. I ordered it on September 11th and I didn't receive it until October 23rd. So it took about 42 days to get here. It came in a box that was about two times thicker than your average box. So you don't really have to worry about it getting damaged on the way. Don't be surprised if you find that your box was opened and then taped shut again. That just means that it was inspected during customs. The box is pretty big because of all the accessories that come included. And also it's surprisingly heavy, coming in at over 30 pounds. I ordered the twin win combo, so I got my cloud wheels and my pneumatic tires. So the accessories that come in the box are the four cloud wheels, the manual, plus a letter sent from uh, probably the, I don't know, the CEO himself maybe. There's a USB-C cable, about a foot long, and there's a golden pump included. There are two aluminum belt covers. Here's a three amp charger with this cable. And there are four cloud wheel belts included, plus two extra pneumatic tire belts. There's the remote control. They also sent a bike light with the common skate tool. They also sent a triple hex tool with three different sized tips. And here are the ABEC pulleys, which are compatible with your cloud wheels. It may not look like it, but these cloud wheels were pretty difficult to remove. So when I'm putting them away, I just insert them sideways. The board took about three hours to recharge straight out of the box. I really like how Walgo sent the board already paired with the remote control. In fact, one of the best features of the board is that once you turn on the remote, the board automatically turns on as well. The deck is made of a mixed combination of fiberglass, bamboo, and Canadian maple, meaning it's both strong and flexible. The deck is a double drop-down deck, which means that it hangs from the trucks as opposed to being laid on top of them. And the center of the board is lower so that your center of gravity is lower to the ground, increasing your stability. And that battery and ESC case is probably one of the biggest ones I've ever seen on a board. And yet in no way does it affect its flexibility. The board also comes with double kingpin trucks. These trucks are especially made for carving. Some people say that they are pretty good at high speeds but I have already skated on my board at high speeds and I gotta say it's a little bit too scary for me and this is coming from somebody who has skated above 25 miles an hour on a Meepo V3 so I am used to high speeds if you are new with double kingpin trucks you can expect to get speed wobbles if you don't know what you're doing with this board you're gonna get two 63 68 belt motors and each one of these motors is going to offer you up to 1500 watts they are also much quieter than the average belt motor the AT wheels are CNC wheel hubs I don't know what CNC stands for but I do know that it means that these hubs are made with high precision machinery even though the website says that this skateboard is water resistant, I still wouldn't dare ride it in the rain. 
simply because the warranty specifically says that absolutely no water damage is covered under warranty. The charging port cover seems a little flimsy to me, so I would be very careful when opening and closing it. That shiny metal looking square on the case is actually the heat sink to the ESC. It's placed there to cool down the ESC. I also have to say that that battery and ESC cover is very well made. It feels very nice and it gives off this high quality feel to the board. It also seems like it would be very easy to clean. The board now comes with foam grip tape. Some people say that this adds more comfort to your ride, but I don't think that's true. All it does is help you sort of lock on better to the board. Here I am giving it a scientific flex test. Just so you know, I weigh 190 pounds, so maybe that's why it's flexing so easily. I don't know if every single all-terrain board does this, but I like how when you flip it over, you don't have to worry about scratching the floor or a table because the wheels are still touching the ground which makes it easy for you to replace the battery or work on your board. Actually, the same thing goes for the board when you flip it sideways. It makes it easy for you to replace wheels or the belts. The cloud wheels are 120 millimeters and I can't wait to try them out because they are still 20 millimeters bigger than the 100 millimeter wheel that I'm used to on the Meepo V3. Here's the letter that comes with every Walgo board. You can pause the video if you want to read it. I'm only going to take a minute to show you some of the parts of the manual that I think are either interesting or very important. On the very beginning of the manual, it tells you that you shouldn't break downhill because of the regenerative braking. So if you have a full battery and you're using the brakes, you can overcharge the battery and the board is just going to shut down. Some additional quick specs are that the battery is a 14 amp hour battery and it has a max output current of 48 amps. On the remote, a long press of the power button will turn it off or on, a short click will change the speed mode, and a double click will change the direction. You get four speed modes, turbo, fast, medium, and slow. Both turbo and fast reach 40 kilometers an hour, but turbo has more torque. The middle mode reaches 30 kilometers an hour and slow mode reaches 20. Note on the bottom of the warranty page that water damage, wheel wear, and artificial damage are not covered in the warranty. Some pointers on maintaining the battery are to charge the battery when it's between 20 and 50%. They don't want you to let the battery go all the way down to zero and then charge it. Also, if you're not going to be using the board for a while, they suggest you keep it at 60% and charge it once a month. They also want you to avoid huge impacts on the board, which to me sounds like it's not made for tricks or stunts. And also they don't want you to flush the board with like with the hose. Now we're going to check out the accessories and to start off, we're going to check out this pump. I really don't like this pump. It feels so flimsy. It feels like a toy, something you could find at Dollar Tree maybe. I just don't trust it. If you really do want to use a pump like this one, I do suggest you go to Walmart and find one like this. This one has a pressure gauge and you can definitely tell the difference. If you really want to go out and buy a better, although more expensive option, I suggest you get this one from Amazon. This is a rechargeable pump. It even has an automatic stop so you can set the pressure and it will stop pumping air once it reaches that pressure. These are the belt guards for the cloud wheels. And the ones for the all-terrain wheels are already on the board. They are made out of aluminum. And I do suggest that you always put them on whenever you can to prevent rocks and debris from getting in the belts. The charger is a 3 amp charger. And here I'm just comparing it to my charger from my Meeple V3, which is a 2 amp charger. Here is the extra pair of AT belts. These are Continental brand. The model is HTD 365M. Each additional pair is going to cost you $25 from the WowGo website. Here are the four belts that come included. These are for your cloud wheels. 
these are HTD 270 5M. And these are going to cost you $20 for each additional pair on the WowGo website. Now with this bike light, I was at first disappointed because I thought it was going to be a cheap light. Then when I turned it on and saw all the different light settings, I was pleased. But then after I charged it, as you can see here, I had a lot of trouble turning it back on again. So I was disappointed again. If you do manage to get your light going, it's a pretty cool light. It offers blue, purple, and red lights with different combinations of flashing. They also send you a basic skate tool. Um, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. It's actually something I've never seen before. It's pretty handy actually. Um, it's a hex tool that offers three different tips. The smallest one is 2.5 millimeters. Then there's a three millimeter and a four millimeter. Uh, this tool is what's gonna help you to change out your belts and your belt guards. And it's also gonna help you remove your battery case. And finally, here we have the ABIC wheel pulleys. It's pretty easy to get them on onto the cloud wheels. And you can see that they're pretty snug. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. That's the end of the unboxing. I hope I answered all your questions, any doubts you had. I hope you figured out if this board is the right one for you. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions, hit me with them in the comments below. And once again, thank you for watching.